Okay, we're recording now. Okay, Metalheads, this is DJ Rem, and we are... No, we are. We're talking with Matt from Single Bullet Theory. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? What's going on? So, uh, so what's going on with you guys right now? Well, we just uh, finished recording, and, uh, and um, it actually just came out on the 27th, uh, the new album, which is called Four. And uh, that's really, uh, right now, I mean, that seems like that's, that's what everyone's focusing on right now as far as in our neck of the woods. We're just kind of just excited that the record came out and uh, excited that we finished it finally. And, um, you know, we're kind of just waiting to see what happens with it. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, from my my perspective, it sounds great. So, Thanks, I appreciate that. It's, uh, yeah, and actually, we've been playing it. We've been playing it on Metalhead, and it's gotten a lot of good response. Everybody has been very, uh, everybody's like, man, who's this band? They're rocking, cool. so... Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of funny that people are still just finding out about us. You know, we've been a band for like ten years, <laughs> eleven years or something. You know, but uh, people are starting out like, "Oh yeah, I, I didn't know you guys existed." I mean, it's just funny that we're now we're finally getting some exposure. Yeah, so I guess this is a good time to, uh, for me at least, well, probably for you too. But this is a good time to, I want to thank Clawhammer for uh, hooking us up together. So if I mean, if it wasn't for Clawhammer, I still would have not heard of you. So I'm I'm very glad that they sent their stuff to me, your stuff That's to me. That's cool. Yeah, they, they seem to be doing a pretty good job. I mean, they're, they're, I never heard of the PR firm before, but uh, you know, the label decided to hire them. I guess they had a relationship with them and stuff. And, and, and we're starting to see some responses, you know, coming in, which is nice. You know, it's uh, they, they're definitely working, so that's important. Yeah, they they send me. A, they, I have a good relationship with those guys, and they kind of know what what style of metal I like, and they just constantly are sending me stuff. And like I said, you were you guys were one of them. So, cool, great. So, well, after a good start. So what? Uh, where did you? Speaking of the album, that since it just came out, where did you guys record that at? Uh, we actually recorded most of it um, at our own places. Uh, we, we we recorded the drums in um, in Wilmington, Delaware. Actually, I'm sorry, in Newark, Delaware, at a, a place called Clay Creek Studios. And um, then the, the drum tracks were, were taken from there, and uh, we took them over to our guitar player's place. And he has, um, you know, I say home recording studios. I don't mean like just a PC with. Uh, you know, an interface to record into Pro Tools. Like my guitar player has a professional studio in his basement. Nice. So we uh, we went ahead and started working on it there. You know, and um, then halfway through the process, it was a real long, grueling process because of the way we were recording. So I went ahead and uh, I went ahead and got a, a full Pro Tools set up in my house, and uh, I sunk some money into it. And you know, I have I have some background in recording because I've been on so many albums and stuff. So I just kind of see, you know what. Let me get a let me get a Pro Tools out of my house. I tracked all my own vocals at my place, and then um, I flew the vocals down to him. So the record was essentially, you know, recorded at John's place, and then uh, you know he, he he mixed the whole thing. So he was he was he, he had his hands in it from ground up, you know. Very cool. So where are you guys out of right right now? Uh, well, I guess we're technically out of the Philadelphia metropolitan area. I mean, the guys are our bass player lives in North Jersey, our guitar player lives in South Jersey. Uh, I live in uh, uh, the burbs of Philadelphia, and our drummer actually lives in Minnesota. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so how often are you guys able to get together and, and and practice and stuff? We actually haven't. The first time we ever were all together holding our instruments is when we shot the video last weekend. Oh wow, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah, we're starting to get together now and rehearse. Uh, we got to fly Adam out here. Our drummer, he he, uh, he lives in St. Paul, and uh, he was in uh, in the in the band Into Eternity before, and um. We have to fly him out here and start rehearsing and stuff because we're going to have to start booking shows and uh, that's going to be the next the next big thing. I mean, we you know, all, all of us can play the stuff, you know, but uh, we never actually have jammed together yet with, with this lineup. So the next the next step will be to get everyone in the same room together and start uh, you know, throwing down some, some riffs and see to make sure what works live, what doesn't work. Cool. So, so you said you guys have been a band, uh, not obviously not the whole lineup, but you guys have been a band for, for like 10 years. How did you guys... Initially, the initial band, how did it get together, and how does things start? Well, we were, I was in a previous band called Cipher, and we were signed to Eclipse Records. And uh, there, there was a couple, there was a couple things going wrong with that project. And uh, I wanted to get into a heavier band and form a heavier band, so we basically dissolved the, the group. And uh, the guitar player at the time and I formed Single Bullet Theory with uh, one of the previous singers of Cipher, because I'm not the original vocalist. And uh, it was like, and I guess, in 2000, you know, and then. Um, you know, we, we basically just kind of put ads out and stuff. And our bass player at the time was Bill Mez. He used to be in Seven Witches. 
and I just actually I bumped into a girl that I knew at a club, and uh, he was with her, and I said, look, I'm looking for a bass player, and she goes, well, he's a bass player. So, you know, he tells me he was in Seven Witches, and I thought, well, shit, okay. I guess you're the man for the job then. So he, uh, you know, he was our bass player for a long time, and we had a, we had a couple lineup changes, but the core of the band was always me and Billy. And then, uh, <clears throat> I guess in, um, 08, I guess in 08, he decided that he was done with music, basically, and, uh, I just kind of, the, the band had dissolved for a while, and we, I kind of sat on some songs and just did nothing, and then I decided to put the band back together, and I got all new guys, you know, that's basically, that's basically the gist of it. Okay, that's cool. What um? So how did you guys come up with the name for the band? Um, the name of the band. I mean, a lot of people think it's a JFK assassination. You know, the, the lone gunman theory. But our old singer Mark, he, he had an interesting way of of, of spinning words and twisting words, and he, and he kind of had this idea where, you know, it, in one moment, anyone's everyone in the band's life had changed in one moment. Or one split decision, your life can change forever. You know. So it was kind of a single bullet theory, that one shot to change your life, you know, and that was basically what, what had happened. The band got put together and we, you know, we chose that name because that was a, you know, our, our concept was this is what's going to change, you know, our, our future, this, this group, you know, which, of course, that didn't work out. <laughs> right. So, right. So the way that we wanted it to, you know, but, I mean, we, we've done quite a good bit of, amount of things that we never would have you know, been able to do, but... But uh, basically, it's not, you know, it wasn't, wasn't some crazy idea. I just, I thought the name was cool. I've always liked it. Then a bunch of these fucking metalcore bands came out with these three name, these three word names, you know, which I, now we're like lumped into that crap, you know. But uh, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I like some of it, but I mean, you know, I just, everyone thinks Single Bull Theory is some metalcore band, which I can't stand that stuff. So, I mean, it's not, I mean, I like some of it, like All the Remains is a good band, but Aside from that, all that crap's, you know, it's, it's aggravating, you know, it's like, okay, a bunch of college-looking kids with guitars. Yeah, it's definitely not, <laughs> yeah, you look at you're like, these guys are metal, really? Yeah, right, exactly. Like, a word that, you know, I've always thought of, of me being like a real deal metalhead guy, you know, like, I'm, you know, I, I still have long hair and tattoos and all that bullshit, of course I still have tattoos, but my point is, like, you know, the long hair thing, you know, was always like, you know, when I was growing up, you had to have long hair to be in a heavy metal band. <laughs> so, I'm stuck with long hair now. I agree. I tell you what, there's many things that that killed me from liking Metallica, but when they cut their hair, I was like, are you kidding me? Well, I think it was best for some of those dudes to cut their hair. Holy fuck. <laughs> you know, but, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's essentially it in a nutshell. I mean, you know, as far as what, what's going on right now, you know, I, I single pull theory, I mean, we've, we've, we've had, we've, it's our fourth record that's come out, you know, and, uh, you know, we've had some, you know, we've had some good things happen, and we've had some things that were just, you know, traumatic to the band, you know, we've had, like every band, you've got ups and downs. We've had some, we've had some pretty low spots, but I mean, you know, bottom line is, you know, you, you put your best foot forward and keep going, you know. Yep, very cl- definitely. Hey, would it be possible to get like some of that older music to to listen to? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, our label is actually the same as our old label. It's not, it's not that our label is like a new label. They just changed their name and they got a new a new marketing plan. But I, but we have, uh, you know, Crash Music with our old label, and it's actually the owner is still exactly the same company. So what I can do is get a hold of Crash and make sure they send you out, you know, Route 666, uh, Behind Eyes of Hatred, and On Broken Wings. Those are the last three records. All right. That'd be, that'd be very cool. I appreciate it. I just, you know, I really like to listen, especially bands that, are, you know, kind of, it sounds like you guys are kind of evolving, you know, as you change lineup and stuff. And uh, it's, I, I really like to hear how a band sounded like 10 years ago and how you sound now just to kind of see the oh, progression it's a vast difference my friend I mean you gotta realize one thing when I sang the Route 666 record which yielded us having uh, the tour with King Diamond and um, we also did a, a video ca- called Murder Machines which which had some exposure on Headbangers Ball and on Uranium um, I had only sang in the band for like a week oh wow <laughs> yeah it was it was a situation where our singer at the time we was in the studio tracking the vocals and we had actually done a tour prior to being signed. We were actually one of the only bands that actually got given this opportunity, which was really nice. We were uh, we were on tour with Tilt, which Engage, uh, Soil Work, and Hypocrisy before we were signed. And you know, basically that that tour was was given. We were given the opportunity to actually talk to a lot of label reps and have them come out and see us because you know there was a little bit of a buzz going on that we were doing this thing unsigned. You know, so you know all the feedback we had gotten, and I'm not going to name names. If people want to research who it is, they can. But but. Uh, the feedback we had gotten was that our singer was, was was the reason we weren't getting signed. So, you know, we we went we came home, we went in the studio and started recording what became Route 666, and uh, our singer, we started sending demos out to some of these people, and they were like, look, we hate the vocals still. 
So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can fucking sing two songs and see what happens. So I went and I tracked two songs, just, you know, real rough. I mean, it was rough. It wasn't it wasn't good sounding by any stretch of imagination. And I uh, sent them over to Crash, and the guy crashed and listen, I would give you guys a deal that the vocals were in this direction. You know, they were, the vocals had to be more, you know, obviously more controlled and a uh, little, little more <laughs> emphasis on finesse. Right. But, I mean, the bottom line was, you know, that, that that's what got us our deal. So... You know, obviously, since this record, I mean, I've been singing now for almost 11 years, you know, and, and uh, this is definitely my most diverse album. I mean, I, my, 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 my heavy voice, I guess you said my growling voice is much heavier than previous, and my, my clean voice and my high-ended stuff, I can, you know, I can do pretty much do whatever I really want to do now. So, I mean, this was the first chance I had to actually do things vocally that I, you know, always wanted to do before but couldn't. Right, and that's and I re- it's really cool because I, I I do really like your voice. I love how you can how you can do that growl and scream, and then how you can just start singing. I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean the thing about it, I've always kind of looked at things like trying to be somewhat extreme. Like people are, are always like, oh, you know, why don't you decide what kind of band you want to be? Do you want to be like a death metal band or a, a Gothen, a, you know, Gothenburg Swedish death metal band or whatever? What kind of what kind of metal do you want to do? And I metal is metal as far as I'm concerned. You know, I mean, I'm just as influenced by Wasp as I am by Dimmy Borgir. You know. So it's like for me to sit there and say, oh, you know, we're, we're going to be the next Queen's uh sounding band, or the next band's going to sound like Machine Head. I mean, it, to me, it just pigeonholes you in, 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 in a situation where you're, where you're stuck sounding the same all the time, you know? Yeah, I get so tired of people trying to put bands in genres. It's like, seriously? And and if we don't, you know, at Metalhead Radio, we're just like, you know what? If we like it and it sounds good, we play it. There, that's, that's how I feel. I mean, dude, if you saw, I have 2,500 CDs, right? If you saw my CD collection, you wouldn't believe the shit that's in my CD collection. I mean, people come to parties in my office and stuff, and they're like, "Dude, you actually?" I'm like, "Yep, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I'd be sure I do." I mean, I mean, it's pretty eclectic, you know. I mean, but I mean, the bottom line is, and I think diversity is the name of the game. You know, I think that's that's. I mean, we wear, I wear all my influences on my sleeves. I don't apologize for any of them. And people who don't like you can go fuck themselves, and that's all there's to it, you know. <laughs> so what? Um, speaking of music, what's uh? What were your influences growing up that kind of, you know, got you into what you well, do I was a, I was a bass player then, so my only influences were Steve Harris, and, uh, like, it was weird because I liked Steve Harris a lot, but I wasn't a huge Iron Maiden fan yet. Now they're my favorite band of all time, but back then when I was 12 years old, you know, I was into Wasp, I thought Blackie Lawless was, like, the scariest guy alive. So it was, like, Wasp and uh, Motley Crue and, and Iron Maiden, and obviously, like, you know, Rain and Blood came out, and uh, that changed everyone's life, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I would say my influences always have been um, not the thinking man's metal. Like, you know, I think one of the best albums of all time was Operation Mindcrime. But I but I don't necessarily say, like, you know, I want to sound like that. I just think that I think I think that um, I was never into, like, the beer, uh, like, the beer metal, like the Godsmacks of the world, you know, of today, you know. Right. Well, Godsmacks, I, mean, I don't even call them metal, so. Well, you know what I mean. Like, it's just that, like, you know. The, the 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 construction worker boots uh, right. the flannel, flannel shirt kind of metal you know gotcha I've, I've always been into the kind of like the stuff that was a little more intense you know now and now looking back at you know like I would say Iron Maiden ultimately was probably my biggest influence of all time I mean there, there's no denying that Iron Maiden is definitely the, a staple mark of heavy metal you know right so speaking of all your musical tastes what if I was to grab your your iPod or your MP3 player from you what would I find you listening to well first of all let's get one thing straight. I don't use one of those fucking things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're old school. But, I gotcha. But uh, but if I was to get one of them, if I was to like, like grab my fiance's or something, no, the uh, no, I mean I would say my what what gets spun the most lately in my I would say lately I say the last like two years I'll just say the last two years. I think some of my favorite bands have been like are Nevermore. I mean Nevermore are good friends of mine and they're they're also one of my favorite bands. You know, but. Um, you know, uh, I, like I told you, Maiden. But like lately, I guess um, what the hell have I gotten lately? I got the uh, the new Anthrax was awesome. I got that last week, the week before. I got the new Dream Theater was somewhat disappointing and somewhat great at the same time. I've heard a lot of people say that actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Mike Portnoy doesn't need to be in the band, but I think they need to fire the singer. I think it's come to the point where he needs to be the next guy to go. But I mean, you know, I, I think that uh, yeah, I would say that you know, what, 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 actually, you know, I just bought Machine Heads. Uh, Unto the Locust a couple of days ago, and I spun that a few times. So, I mean, I, you know, I pretty much buy everything that comes out of any bands of any merit. You know, I I, I, I will go buy a CD just because, uh, you know, I, uh, I mean, what I do is my philosophy on music, and I wish all metalheads thought this way, 
it's like, okay, I live in Philadelphia, but I hate the Philadelphia Eagles, and I'll never like the Philadelphia Eagles, and that's all there is to it. But the bottom line is, just because you live in a city and you support a team, if they have a bad year, you don't stop supporting that team. And, like, Iron Maiden have had some really shitty records over the last 20 years, but guess what? I got every single one of their albums, and if they come out with an album next week and it gets terrible reviews, I'll buy it because I'm a fan. Yeah, that's that's a good a good way to think for sure. Yeah, and, I, and it's also like I kind of look at it like you know creating a collection. The bottom line is, you know, why 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 have a partial collection? If I was to go start collecting stamps, I would seek out the most valuable and the best stamps in the world and have them. So I mean, like I have like 17 Dream Theater albums. I have every Dream Theater record plus all kinds of bizarre bootlegs, and I, I don't listen to any of them really. I listen to a few of them here and there, but it's just nice to have. I like I'm a supporter from. From day one till the day I die, I support whatever I I like. The one point, you know. Uh-huh. That's very cool. Where uh, where can people, speaking of you guys, where can people buy this new album? Well, I don't know. I mean, it, it, that that's you know, it, as the industry changes, I've noticed it's getting harder and harder to find everybody's CDs, um, especially when you're a smaller band like we are, you know, on on somewhat of an independent label. Um, I found that SYE is carrying it, which is a chain out my neck of the woods. Yep, they have that here in the mall, too. Yeah, I mean, SYE is carrying it. I don't know how, how plentiful they're carrying it. But um, I, bought, I went out and bought mine, because I, I always buy my own disc for, you know, just to say I did. I, I found mine at a mom pa shop. But, I mean, you know, from what I know, it's supposed to be available at all the SYEs. It's supposed to be available at all, like, the Gallery of Sounds. And um, basically any, any music retailer, really. Best Buy, for whatever reason has put it online, but they're not actually bringing it into the brick-and-mortar stores. So that's kind of a, a difficult situation because we were really hoping to be in Best Buy because we've been in Best Buy in the past. But according to um, the guy that runs our A&R, our label, he's getting told that the distributor is telling him that Best Buy have changed their buying habits. So I think they're the same company that buys for Walmart is buying for Best Buy, so it's almost impossible to get into Walmart. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, I would, I would suggest any fan out there that's just the idea of buying the rest of checking out. Just go to Amazon.com or BestBuy.com, uh, BarnesandNoble.com, um, or you know we're also on iTunes. But the thing about iTunes is we we have two bonus tracks on the album. Uh, one of which is a death cover. We did Spirit Crusher, and uh, the other of which is a, is a song from our second record called "The Hurt That Never Ends." Both of those songs feature Matt Thompson, who's the drummer of King Diamond, and uh, those two bonus tracks are only available on the actual aluminum CD. Very cool. So if you can't get them on iTunes, there's only nine songs available on iTunes and the bonus stuff. And there's also a bonus, a hidden bonus track, which is a remix of one of the songs that's on the main album. That's uh, so there's actually three bonus tracks for the people to sink their teeth into if they buy the actual, you know, the actual disc. Okay, people, go buy the CD, then you get all the music. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Speaking of the actual CD, this is something else that I'm, I'm always very curious about. Is the uh, the cover the artwork on the cover is very cool and how did how does that come who whose idea was that the design on there well see I, we we've got a really close friend of the band his name is Brett Worley and uh, Brett for every album cover I've ever been on and I even insisted when I joined Pissing Razors one of the conditions of me joining Pissing Razors was that Brett did the artwork and uh, the bottom line is if I do a CD Brett does the artwork so what I basically tell him is. I, I, I didn't even see the artwork until it was pretty much finished. I don't really care. I, I, I just cre- his, his, he's very constructive. He's very creative. You know, so I just said, okay, here's the deal. He'd make something that's just kind of like you know a very bizarre looking cover, and uh, you know, and, and come up with something that you like. So he sent me over, you know, the brain design <clears throat> um, without the logo, and he said, what do you think? And I said, fuck, it's sick. <laughs> it's great. So. He did that, then I went in to reconstruct the logo to have like a, you know, that's going to be our, our permanent logo now because we've always kind of changed our logo with each CD. So the logo on the front of it was just it's a brand new construction, and we're going to keep that probably for, you know, until I change my mind again, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I just, it's, it, Brett's, he's, he's very, very good at what he does. He's, he's as good as, as anybody out there that's doing this stuff professionally because he does it professionally, but not for the music industry. You know, he's got a, a very, very high-paying job in the graphic media department, uh, in the graphic media world. And uh, you know, when he gets time, he does stuff for me. When he doesn't, it's not a big deal, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, he de- definitely did a great job. But I definitely think it's yeah. killer. He's a twisted dude, so he comes up with twisted stuff. That's sometimes how the best artwork comes to be. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's yeah, he's great. He's fantastic. He's actually shot our first video, our first video, of Murder Machines, which is you know available on YouTube now. Brett shot that with my father's three hundred and fifty dollars camcorder. 
Yeah, it was unbelievable. We thought this is crazy. What are we actually trying to do here? And we and we filmed it with no budget, nothing, and it was the only video that we had that actually got accepted to be on Headbangers Ball. We couldn't believe it. Hey, you know what? Sometimes that's all you need to do to make a movie, too. Blair Witch Project. <coughs> yeah, right. Remember that movie? That was funny. God. We're actually, it's funny we're actually talking about this. We're filming our video uh, for, for Diabolical, which is the opening track on our album. Um, we filmed all the performance footage a couple weeks ago, and we used a guy named Jay Bones, who uh, Jay Bones owns a company called Digital Viking Films, and he shot our second video, and he actually works for VH1, so he's, he's got up you know, he's awesome. But the actual acting, we're, actually, we're doing an acting sequence in it where, you know, it's, 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 I don't want to give it away, but it's a pretty creepy video. And we're doing, we're shooting all that footage today. We already shot some of it, and I'm taking a break from it now to talk to you. And then we're going back out to shoot the rest of it today and tomorrow. But uh, it's going to be pretty cool. It's, uh, it's going to be a pretty twisted video. It's a really twisted fucking song, so. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing the video, for sure. Yeah, it's going to come out cool. I mean, I got all the faith in the world it's going to come out awesome. I mean, there, you know, we... we we do a lot of things DIY, you know, that's, that's, I like to have my hands in everything, and it's maybe because I'm a control freak and a micromanager, but I'm willing to accept that as a fault and move on with my life, you know. So, the video will be definitely good or it will not be released, and that's all there is to it. That's how I felt about this album. I, this, this, this album took 18 months to record because yeah, we went back to the drawing board like seven times. There's six songs that aren't even on the album, but we recorded and we're done. And we said, nah, we're not putting them on the record. Well, that's... It just shows you're passionate that it's that it has to sound exactly what you want. So yeah, absolutely. And it didn't take ten years like you know Axl Rose, so that's good too. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, it's, well, it didn't take ten years like Axl Rose. But then again, I also didn't release the Chinese Democracy. You know. Yeah, exactly. I think that record's awesome. I, know, I everyone says, "Oh, you're out of your mind." I think that record is is, a, is, a, is brilliant. I mean, it's a shame it says Guns N' Roses because it really isn't Guns N' Roses, but. The bottom line is, I mean, if it was released by some other band, if a band like, uh, I don't know, I don't, I'm just saying a brand new band had come out with that record, they would be hailed as like the, you know, the heroes of the world right now. But because it's got the, you know, the stigma of having Axel on it, people, you know, want to say, they want to hear Use Your Illusion 1, too, you know? Yeah, I just want something that doesn't have drama from him in it. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think that's possible. I don't think you're going to get anything from him without drama, you know? As a matter of right. fact, we're buying tickets to see him live in a couple of weeks. I think we're playing in November, and I thought... I'll buy the tickets, but there's a good chance I'm not going to see him live, you know? <laughs> right. He has to show up first. Exactly. He's got to show up, you know. But, I mean, like I said, I've always supported Guns N' Roses, and that's exactly going back to what I said before. You know, I have all their albums, and no matter what they do, I'll buy the record, because, I mean, actually, you asked about influences. That was my first concert ever. I saw Guns N' Roses um, with a band called Zodiac Mind Warp open up for him at, the, at a place that was like a 3,000-seat room in Philadelphia when I was like 12. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. They were they were the first they were the first video I ever saw on MTV. Well, yeah, for, yeah, probably I mean, uh, Welcome to the Jungle or Sweet Child of Mine. Yeah, it's but, Welcome to the Jungle. It, yeah, the day that I saw them live, it's kind of weird. It was the day it was exactly the same day that, that uh, Sweet Child of Mine aired. It was the debut. Oh wow. Yeah, that was cool. My brother took me, so I was all excited. You know, a twelve year old kid going to see Guns N' Roses. You know, it was, like, yeah. I hated the idea of it, but it was. You know, it, it, I think that's what got me the, the idea of saying like, I got to do something like this. You know. That's what I got to do. I mean, it seems so much fun to be in a band at the time, you know. Right. <laughs> what um? So off your new album, what's your favorite to play? Um, I would say the song "What Have I" is my favorite. It's the second song, and uh, yeah, it's probably my second, my my favorite song on the album. That or that or the Wake of Betrayal, which is which is a, a, a nightmare to play, but it's a really cool song. As far as I'm concerned, I think it's a really cool song. Nice. But I mean, you know, I like I like them all. You know, I mean, my my favorite, you know, I guess Auctioneer of Souls was really cool. But that was, you know, I have a hard time listening to that because I heard that song a gazillion times trying to get it created with all these guitar players that guess that you know the guest musicians on it. So, cool. I'd say probably yeah yeah I would say what have I. So what um anything else that you'd like you know everybody the world to know that's going to listen to this interview at some point to know about you guys? Anything we haven't talked about? Well, I mean, basically, just, you know, the, the, you know, don't believe everything you read, you know. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there that there's a lot of press about me that isn't even, you know, there's a lot of negative shit that goes along with the, with the name of the band. But it's a new band, it's a new philosophy, it's a new idea. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, the name is the same, but, but, the, but the ingredients have changed. So, I mean, I guess that's what I like to really say. I mean, just don't dismiss the record based on some previous review you read of an album three years ago or, you know, something like I'm hard to work with. You know, everyone says I'm real hard to work with because I've, 
had so many lineup changes, but nobody's nobody's in my shoes and nobody knows, you know, what it's like to be in my band. Exactly. But, uh, you, you don't read too much about Jack, you know, Jack Frost firing everybody every couple of weeks from Seven Witches or John Schaefer going through like a hundred members of Ice Earth. You know, but but for some reason they like to say, oh, this guy must be a real asshole to work with because he's always getting rid of people. Well, maybe because maybe because a lot of people that have been involved in this group are you know don't have the, their expectations are different than mine. You know, right? And if they're, if they're not a good fit, they're not a good fit. I mean, what else are you gonna do? And, and, and here's the thing: you don't know if they're not a good fit until they join, and that's. You know, people don't understand. Like, you know, you don't know if someone's going to work out until you're in the tour bus with them. You don't know if someone's going to work out until you start writing songs with them. You know, I mean, anybody that comes up to try out can play guitar and get in a band, of course. You know, if he seems like a cool guy, he can play guitar. But, you know, if the chemistry hasn't gelled, then you got to move on. We need to break the whole band up. That's usually what happens. People, a lot of lineup changes, you know, unless you're really successful from the early days, there's a lot of lineup changes sometimes in bands. I mean, Megadeth is going through, like, you know, 12 different sets of people. But, I mean, the bottom line is, you know, it's still Megadeth. It still sounds like Megadeth when, it's, when the album comes out. It's still Dave Mustaine's vision, and Single Bullet Theory is my band. Right? There's there's no way around that. It, it, this is my group. This is I make the final decision on everything that we do. And it, it's so, I mean, if it's something where a member is working out or a member doesn't want to work out or I don't think they're going to have the commitment they need, then they get they get removed. That's kind of why we don't have a permanent drummer. We will never have a permanent drummer. I mean, our drummer lives in Minnesota, but he's going to be just our touring drummer. But we'll never have a permanent drama probably ever again. Well, and yeah, and I mean, if you can make that work, then that's that's all matters, you know, right? Well, yeah, it, it's just it, it seems to make the most sense. It's easy for the three of us to get together and record, and it's easy for the three of us to do things. I mean, we, we work together amazingly. I'm I'm concerned about bringing in a fourth ingredient. I'm I'm concerned about bringing in a fourth a fourth person, you know, to has to has the uh, a decision making um, percentage. You know what I mean? Because Every time there's been a drummer situation, we've had problems. I mean, the last drummer that was in our band that was actually our band was actually the reason that the band broke up for two years almost. So he, 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 you know, and like I said, I'm not going to mention names. And like, if people want to research it, they can find out who it is. That's that's. I'd like to do it that way. That's, it's, I think it's more uh, diplomatic to do it that way. But we had a situation with one of our drummers that, that basically forced my bass player, my best friend, out of the group and said, "I don't want to do this anymore." <laughs> so, you know, it's like you know, I just kind of think that the three of us go on great, and it's what it's going to stay. Right. Yep. Definitely. You know, it's just like just like a job, man. If if, if somebody doesn't work out, the the, play, the the business doesn't go out out of business. You get rid of the the problem. Right. And I run and I and I own my own business here in Philadelphia, and I've I've owned my own business since 1999, and I I've had several employees. I've had probably 70. And I and the bottom line is, you know, I run this band exactly the same way that I run my business. It, it, it's it's business. It's it's business first, feeling second, and, and if you can't handle that. And here's the thing, I, when I have interviews with people in the business or in the band, I tell them point blank what to expect, what not to expect. So it's not like I'm, I'm candy coating anything and then pulling the rug off my underneath them, you know, three months down the road. Yeah. You know, I mean, things run a certain way. If you don't like it, then this is probably not the opportunity for you, you know? Yeah, I, I totally understand. I, <laughs> place I work, I have about 60 people under me, and that's exactly what happens. They all are told, you know, my expectations, and when the expectations aren't met, then they usually find themselves not employed anymore. Right, exactly, and they wonder why. Yep. So, but, I mean, I get it. The truth, yeah, the truth of the matter is, you know, it, it, it's, it, this is a machine, the machine existed before you, and the machine will exist after you. Right, yeah. Nobody's irreplaceable, that's what I always say. Right, well, in single bullet theory, I am. I'm the only person that's irreplaceable. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, because... If they, I go down, the name's going with me. Right, there's no more single bullet theory. theory. Right. I thought I would like. I, I try to convince the drummer of Pissing Razors to let you know to do another record, you know, but he won't do it. And I thought, well, just tell me the name. But he kind of feels the same way. He is Pissing Razors is his band. Right. Uh, he'll, he'll never let that album, you know, an album go out. But he's not on. I thought, well, I'll give you money for the name. I'll offer him some a pretty decent amount of money just to record another record, you know, with, with the Pissing Razors name. But he uh, he wasn't he wasn't into hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, hey, I got one last thing. If you could do for me before I let you go. If you can make a couple uh, station tags for me to play. Sure. So if you can say, have one that says, you know, this is Matt from Single Bullet Theory. You're listening to DJ Rem at MetalheadRadio.com. And then a second that says the same thing, but just just that you're listening to MetalheadRadio.com. Hey, DJ Rem, like R-E-M? Yep. Okay. Hey, this is Matt from Single Bullet Theory. You're listening to DJ Rem on MetalheadRadio.com. Perfect. Uh, okay, and then uh, here's the one. This is Matt from Single Bullet Theory, and you're listening to MetalHeadRadio.com. Perfect, man. Appreciate it a ton. 
No problem, my man. I appreciate the interview. Believe me. Yeah. So I appreciate you spinning the music. That's awesome. Yep, it'll be spinning. It's well, it spins every show of mine. And then on uh, on Tuesday when I at ten at Tuesday at ten p.m. Eastern is when the interview will play back on my show. There'll be you, you should have saw the flyer that was made because it's been posted all over the place. Um, so if you haven't seen it, tell me so I'll email it to you. And that, actually, go ahead. I haven't seen it, so go ahead. If you can email it to me, great. Yep, I sure will. And then after I play the interview, I will play the entire new album. So. Oh, cool! Oh, awesome! Dad. I really appreciate it. They will get a full dose of. The, is there any, is there any way when this thing's all said and done, you can email me like a copy of, of the interview just so I have it? Yep, definitely. What I've started doing, actually, I just started doing this like last week. Not not interviewing. How I'm how I'm distributing these. I was podcasting them, and then I had this thought. I'm like, you know podcasts they want you to pay and they limit how much you can upload and i was like you know i can convert this to a movie file and i can put it on youtube so right. l- last couple interviews i've you i put up on youtube and i and i was like oh my god why didn't i do this you know, like a year ago because right. now every time somebody searches for your band uh, on youtube not only do they get your music videos they get my interview so right that's a good idea free bandwidth <laughs> so, so you will be getting uh yeah i will post i'll send you a link in an email Awesome, brother. So. I definitely appreciate it, and uh, you know, like I said, I appreciate you spreading the word. And uh, you know, it's very, very cool of you. Hopefully, there'll be a lot more of you out there. You know. Yeah, for your sake, I hope there is, because that's what it's all about. It's all about uh, getting every th- every band I talk to. It's 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 one simple theory. It's if I like the music that I'm listening to, I'm like, you know what? These guys are awesome. I want more people to hear them, and that's 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 what it's all about for me. So, cool. like I said, much appreciated. So, okay, man. Well, have uh, have a good time with the rest of your video. All right, brother. Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Bye.